Okay, this is a great transition because I, I'm hesitant to talk because I feel like it's a little too loud. Is this a little? Okay, we're good? All right, I get loud. If I get too loud, let me know. So, um, it's a great transition from the idea of cubes because some of you may have heard once upon a time there was a project to start technical certifications and it was called CUBE. Uh, that project has ceased to exist for some very, very good reasons that I'm not going to get into, but we need technical certifications for the Ubuntu community. It's really, really important, and I'm going to talk a little bit about why. So, Canonical Ubuntu Essentials is the name of the program that I've been working on for the last couple years, um, and proving self-taught career skills is why. All right, so I'm Adriana Frick, Adri for short. I lead Canonical's efforts to create exams and credentials that validate technical skills, blah, blah, blah. I am dedicated to making new career pathways and opportunities for professional accomplishment that will allow anyone from any background to prove their abilities. This is important. Whether they gained them in a traditional educational environment, professional experience, or through home lab experiments and self-study. And this is where it comes in. Down here, perfect. Yeah, I can hear the plosive coming up. Is that better? All right, so I started out, uh, I have here the 90s, but somebody pointed out my uh, ATDT sticker a little earlier. So I actually started much earlier than that. Um, in the 80s, I was a BBSer. Um, I have a telecom background. I worked uh, tearing down pops, for those of you who remember the early days of modems. And I worked at Walnut Creek CD-ROM uh, about 25 something, 30 years ago. Uh, so for those of you who remember back then when uh, we distributed Slackware and FreeBSD. So I've been a member of the Linux community for a while. I'm sorry, I'm hearing that popping and it's driving me crazy. Yeah. Uh, I think you and I have different shaped faces. Maybe. All right, so uh, I was in tech for a long time. I was in tech in .com. Who remembers .com? Yeah. And then I got out of tech. For those of you who remember, you might remember why. Uh, it was a lot, and I decided, you know what, I'm done with this. So uh, I went to school, I have a, a master's degree in comparative literature, and I taught for a long time. I was one of the few literature teachers who also taught in our Cisco routing program. Uh, and then I went and uh, opened a small town yoga studio. Now, I ran our website off of a LAMP server in my garage. So uh, back then, it was 12.04, uh, I believe. I had been on FreeBSD before, and I converted to Ubuntu back in 2012. And I've been running Ubuntu since. So uh, clearly, I've bopped around for a while, and I came back to tech. Yay! And then I immediately had to leave tech again in 2020. That may ring a bell for some people. So as a, a, and this might also ring a bell for some people, I've had to leave to be a family caregiver for a variety of reasons. When I ran the yoga studio, I took care of my grandmother who had Alzheimer's and eventually dementia. So we have reasons for making the choices that we do, right? And our paths here are all going to be very different. How do we show what we've done? How do we prove our knowledge? How do we prove where we come from and what we know? We have skills. Maybe they're self-taught. Maybe it's not in a, a thing where we got a piece of paper. So how do we show it to people? Right now, we're in occupational volatility. Those of us who remember the dot-com days, it's, it's a, a market out there, shall we say. So having ways to show what we know, even if we aren't an expert, we can show, I, I have these skills. These are, are useful, marketable skills. How do we prove it? Okay, how do you convince people? Well, tech certs are a way we've done that in the past, but they suck, right? Tech certs are not great. They're a huge problem. They don't work very well. For one thing, they're frequently irrelevant. I, when I came back to tech, was so excited to take the CCNA because they were still asking questions about frame relay. And I was like, yes, I know this one, right? Usually it's very, very irrelevant. It's out of date. They're unreliable. Um, you have these uh, very fly-by-night sort of multiple choice questions, and you don't know. Did that actually measure anything? Did that actually prove anything? They're also frequently unattainable. They're way too expensive, or they take way too much time, and you're not going to be able to complete them in your busy schedule. 
So what we've been working on is something that is re relevant, reliable, and convenient. So Canonical Ubuntu Essentials, which we shorthand call Q, we're focused on real world skills. How do we measure them and how do we prove them? Now, if you look at this, this might look familiar. Okay, what does this look like? Just off the top of your head. Yeah, well, there's terminal screens, but it also looks like a desktop, right? Right, we've got the, that's a jammy jellyfish in the back. You can't see it because there's stuff in front. Now, if you look over here, this is just a web browser window, but the whole thing is a browser. You can see up there, it says ubuntu.com slash credentials, right? That's all it is, it's just a web browser. You go to the website, click, click, click. In your browser, you don't have to have this massively crazy proctored thing. You don't have to go to a test center. You just, in your browser, open up a, a desktop interface. That is essentially graphical. Right now, it's uh, via Guacamole, RDP. Uh, we're looking at uh, possibly some improvements for 2410. That little Ubuntu up at the top, that's just our website. That's the Canonical website. It's letting you know where you are. Uh, over here, we have Canonical at Warty. I'm glad some folks mentioned why it would say Warty, right? So this is your starting point, right? Because that's where we started. When you're working on your exam, your exam instructions are in a browser window, and you just go over to Ubuntu at Artful. Every single one of our uh, VMs that we have in our environments are named for historical Ubuntu distros, and you'll find that some of the questions have little Easter eggs in them for our community. So these are the features. They're about 60 minutes or less each. Um, they're hands-on, performance-based, so if you can add a user in an environment, you're adding a user in an environment. You're going to do real life exercises. Our questions were written with the idea of you're playing sim sysadmin. It's like a, a role playing game, right? You've started at the company, you're coming in, and now you have a task to perform. So we have a number of hands-on performance-based exercises that's gonna give you in-depth proof. We also have some multiple choice questions because you wanna have breadth, right? And not all questions require a VM. We have the Ubuntu desktop environment with the little Easter eggs, which are kind of celebrating our 20 years of history. So how did we make it relevant? Right, it's very easy to use words. Let me prove them. So the first thing we did is we went through multiple industry sources. We went to subject matter experts. We uh, compared and contrasted hundreds of LinkedIn job listings. We looked at book tables of contents, one in particular, but there are a number of other books that we reviewed as well. So we went to a lot of different industry sources and said, okay, what's important? What's essential? Where the only way that we're going to reach something that makes people happy is to find consensus. So that's what we looked at doing. And then after that, we went through and we had a number of subject matter experts review and rank the importance and also the frequency of tasks. If it's very important and you do it all the time, I'm gonna test you on it. If it's not important and you never ever do it, look it up, right? There's no reason to waste your time by putting it on an exam if nobody cares. Also, we went through multiple rounds of internal, public, and industry partner testing thus far to bring it to you. So what we're going for is we're data-driven. We start with SMEs giving us content guides. We then do continuous evaluation using industry standard item quality metrics. I'm not gonna talk about that in depth. If you would like to know about it in depth, I will bore you to tears, love talking about it. Um, and we also are looking to have versioning. So right now we're matching it with Ubuntu versions. We are looking to get to a place of continuous improvement. So we currently have it where we'll have the 2404 and then the 2410. So each certification, when you go to an employer to show them, they're going to get a sense of what is on each one. So as we develop and expand, you'll get new information. So where you want it, it's a browser. When you want it, you figure it out and they're in pieces and parts. So if you're ready for the first one, you take that one and then you study for the next one. You don't have to sit for this grandiose three hour monstrosity. You can pick away at it. It can be on your budget and your time schedule, how you want it. So right now, I do not have significant restrictions. Now, obviously, if we 
get to a point where it's a security issue and I have to kind of restrict things, we will. But for the most part, I try to keep our proctoring very, very lightweight. I don't want to mess with anybody's machines and I don't want to mess with your workflow because in real life, you have your setup that you want to use. You can take the exams as you need them. So the first one that is available today is a vendor neutral Linux. Now it is an Ubuntu system, so some commands might feel less vendor neutral if you have, for instance, a Red Hat background. Um, you can also skip the exams you don't want. So if all you want is that Linux Essentials exam, that one's ready to go. We will also have one that's specific to desktop and one that's specific to server. And you can pay by exam. So that way we can kind of pick away at it and work toward it. So the first step is to go to the website. It is available right now. You can use that QR code and go there. This is what it should look like. This is a recent screenshot. And uh, that QR code is available on the next slide as well if you don't quite get to it. So this is just what to expect from the site. I'm going to skip to the next one. The QR code will still be there. You can sign up to be a pre-release tester. So this is not just testing our current exam. This is also signing up to test uh, future exams. Uh, you can also be a subject matter expert. So as I mentioned, we go to these panels and we say, what's important? What should we be working on? What do you think about this question? Does it seem right to you? Does it seem realistic? Is it still relevant? Um, we had to dial back the cron question. Let me tell you, we have people up in arms over, I still believe in asking about cron because you need to know your fundamentals. It's important. We probably spend a little too much time on cron. So feel free to be one of those subject matter experts saying, Adri, you haven't been a system administrator in way too long. You have no idea what you're talking about. That is why we need experts. We need subject matter expertise to help us find consensus. So how else can I help? Can I help distribute these things uh, to educational environments? Can I, random person in the audience, uh, use this in a nonprofit capacity? Yes, email me, ask me. We're looking for training partners. We're looking for people who wanna help out with developing syllabi. We're looking for ways that we can help the community. So this will go to my team. I will probably see it, if not me, someone who is under me will see it. We will get back to you. Now, the actual exam itself, some people may want to take it. If you would like to, this is what is on the exam. So, secure system access, uh, create a directory with group permissions. Uh, this is all on the website, by the way. So if you did the, the I'm just scrolling down for you. I'm just saving you a step, right? So that way you're not looking down at your phones, you're seeing it in big print. Uh, permission stuff, password complexity, a lot of you are going to go, oh, I can do this. I can do this right now. Keep that thought in mind. It might be relevant. Uh, let's see. Understanding creation of user accounts. You're going to have to know sudo. You're going to have to know SSH. Know that there's a file system. Kids today, OK, we have these things called files. All of your electronics are obscuring that. But there are files, they exist, there are file systems, we're going to learn about them. We're going to do a, not a ton of regular expressions on this one, it's a little bit, there's a lot more coming on um, server. Uh, keep in mind, this is one third of the overall package, so you will take it and you will say, I don't know, I didn't get the whole thing, it's kind of an amuse-bouche. That's intentional, it's on purpose, there's two more to come. Uh, navigate file systems, know your way around. There's a, a license question that kind of messes people up. I will ask you to actually look up the licenses. They don't like that. Maintain system resources. Uh, one of the big ones is going to be uh, managing storage devices and managing partitions. Uh, and then there's a lot of uh, questions that are about, uh, there's some about resources, some about logs. Those come up a little bit more in the future. We do have some self-study resources. It's a work in progress. Uh, it mostly just shows you stuff uh, that we already had on the website that will be relevant to the exam. This is approximately uh, what we're looking at right now. Uh, we don't have our pricing set 100%, so I'm not going to say anything about that. I can let you know. It is lower than all of these available. 
So that might be helpful for you. There are cost-minded. That's obviously not something that enterprise cares about, but it's something I care about. Because when I started in this industry, people, there weren't college classes in it. You know, everybody was, was self-taught. And some of us got out of really bad situations to get into this industry, and I want those pathways available for people coming today. So we're going to make it affordable, and uh, we also want to make it competitive. That, you know, it's affordable, but that doesn't mean that it's easy. Accessible doesn't mean easy. So you can try it out. If you want to take it today, right now, you can do it. Well, maybe not right now. It's going to take me a minute to answer the email. Uh, if you really want, I can give you a key here at this moment, but uh, it'll probably be better if you get the email that tells you the URL that you're going to go to to enter it. Uh, I think I had more stuff on here, but I think that's good enough. Yeah, I have like 10 more slides that'll show you how to enter your key and all this other stuff, but you don't really need to know that. If you want to know, I can show it to you later. So are there any questions? Yes, Ted's got one. So this is really exciting. I love to see the work done here. Um, what, you've talked about these first three courses. Where do you see the, this, this system or this, this mechanism going after that? Do you OK. So um, this machine took a long time to build. Um, and it takes a long time to build a precision machine that is then capable of outputting things. I am dying because I expected to have so many more things available. Um, but that said, right now, as soon as we get Q done, as soon as we get this level, we're looking at, uh, and, and it's, these are tentative, all right? You, you can quote me, but, but air quotes. Um, that said, my next that I'm looking at is CIE, which is going to be our infrastructure level, and that's going to kind of work with, you, you may or may not know, but uh, Canonical has been doing a lot of work in LuxD space, uh, Kubernetes space, OpenStack space, et cetera. So we're looking at uh, an initial level of exam that's kind of for people who maybe have managed services. So they're trying to understand things from an operational perspective, but not necessarily an architectural perspective. And then as we develop the essentials line out, so we're looking at um, a developer track to go over, for instance, snaps, things like that. Um, Andrea, who some of you have seen, has been, uh, she and I are meeting up to talk about our data science line that we're looking at. And then once we build out the essentials line, uh, we're, there are kind of two branches that I'm looking at. One is going to go into more of a multiple choice level. For those people, you know, Q is really set to be an entry level system administrator kind of task. Um, it is fundamentals. Uh, it was very important to me that people actually know how to do things because a lot of exams today are Ansible. Like learn the Ansible for it. Well, what happens if you have a machine that you have to actually engage with? You know, do you still know what those commands are? So I don't have a lot of scripting on this, but as we get into um, the professional level, we'll start getting into um, probably more juju and things along those lines. So uh, we have it spec'd out for the next two years. I have, I think, about 10 different lines that I'm looking at, series, and each of those will have three to five quick certs or uh, quick certifications that will each be short and easy to accomplish. That's the goal. I want to remove friction from the proctoring process and the sign-up process as much as possible. How often would you have to renew a certification? Right now, um, because of the versioning, it's going to be somewhere between two to three years. It depends on, you know, sort of the market moves really quickly. My hope is that if we can get employers to buy into the versioning system, then you'll just be able to kind of update. You won't have to do the whole song and dance over again. That's the next question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, it, how many times can I ask you if you know what sudo means? Right? That, that, that hasn't changed. A, a lot of what's on this test, you know, the, the fundamentals, they, they haven't changed in a long time. Ones are still ones. Zeros are still zeros. So a lot of those skills that were relevant 20 years ago are still relevant today when you're starting out. So for Q, 
uh, I'm less concerned. Uh, when you get to the higher level stuff, uh, especially right now, OpenStack space is insane, Kubernetes space is insane. So for those, we may update more frequently. Sudo is how we make sandwiches. Everyone knows Indeed. that. Indeed. Uh, anybody else see that on the board outside and almost want to write it? I have a good, so uh, when you uh, talk to subject matter experts, uh, will you be uh, also like taking, uh, like so for example, like if I think if something relevant is, uh, you know, what are the two modes in VI, right? Um, so there is a VI question. Uh, so Don't come at me, Emacs people. So if they, can I then suggest that uh, the two modes, because uh, you know we want to be generic and something that's broadly, uh, you know, uh, applicable, relevant. That's the word. That's relevant to generically to every distro, not just Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. So like for example, if I signed up to uh, preview things, could I suggest that the two modes of VI are beep repeatedly and break everything? Um, I, I I'm afraid the correct answer was uh, don't know how to exit makes you cry. But um, it, how many people have, have had your first VI experience? Because it was a hazing ritual at Walnut Creek CD-ROM. And in fact, they, uh, those of you who know Nano, it was Pico when I was a kid. And they would actually alias Pico to Ed. <laughs> yeah, because they were not nice. So that is how I grew up as a child. Uh, be before I pass on to real questions, uh, lest any uh, Emacs fan uh, feel too smug about my joke, I also think that Emacs stands for Escape Meta Alt Control Shift. <laughs> I like that we don't get into the wars as much as we used to, but I worked next to uh, an Emacs guy, and, and we, that was probably half our day, was just yelling at each other. Um, if anybody wants to, to see what's on the exam, please feel free to, to ask me any details. Um, obviously, I, well, I, Depending on the time, I might even be able to show you one, but. Uh, well, that's not the time I'm worried about. The time I'm worried about is whether it's expired. I had one running. Uh, and as I mentioned, they are time limited. Ah, uh, yeah, it quit. Uh, this is what it would look like at the end. Uh, you would get this. This is. Uh, it will just ask you to complete an exit survey, and that lets me know what you think of the quality, what you think of our environment, uh, and folks who are participating in this round, we do have some uh, changes already on our roadmap for 2410, so you will also get invitations to beta test our 2410 version. Yeah, sorry, uh, it, as I mentioned, it goes, uh, I have it set to 75 minutes right now for accessibility purpo uh, purposes. And it expired two minutes ago. Uh, I couldn't hear that. What? Uh, okay. So right now you will get a credit. Well, when we are finished with our testing phase, you will get a Credly badge. Really quick, I, I do want to speak to that. So I did ask for my son to be brought back in because one of the reasons I was in telecom is my dad was in telecom. Papa Bob was in telecom. And when I was little, I went to points of presence. For those of you who don't know what those are, we used to have modems, and I had to help strip modems down and replace them. So it's, it's a family affair, it's a family business, and so he is a huge part of this. Someday he's gonna learn skills in this industry as his father and mother and grandfather and great aunts and everybody else have. There's a long-standing tradition at scale that they have a track that we will see all over tomorrow, TNG, the next generation. And they celebrate uh, not just teaching kids, they have kids doing the teaching. I learned Blender from a 10-year-old. Um, there's some amazing stuff that happens at the next generation track. So uh, 
Yeah, enjoy that for all that that brings. But this is sort of TNG for adults. This is advancing us forward, and I'm really pleased to see the focus you have on this. I have personal questions for you and I afterwards, but really glad we could fit this in. My apologies, we were not able to put this on the printed schedule, but what a great surprise to have you here. And really quick, uh, my name is again, Adriana Frick. Uh, feel free to reach out to me wherever. This is, I live and breathe this. I love this. I care so much about it. I will talk your ear off about it. So if you're wondering, how do you actually measure and quantify the concept of knowledge. How do you build these sorts of things? Those of you who are working with curriculum, if you want to know about that, come talk to me. If you want to know about being a gutter punk, you know, punk rock kid starting out in this industry in my teens, come talk to me about that because there's room for everyone here. There's a home for everyone here and I deeply believe that and I want to facilitate everyone's success.